Look, right. we cleaned up the tag room, took the inventory. We restretched that section of fence. And what about that gate? Uh, we hung that this morning, ignore all the hinges. And we stacked and covered the winter feed. We got nothing else to do. Well, we still got to round up them strays down Cinnamon Canyon. Well, we should round them up for another week. We round them up now, they're just stray again. You're right. We ain't got nothing to do. That's what I said. Howdy. Anything I can do for you? Yeah. We're gonna find Ben Cartwright. He's right in the house. I'm his son, maybe I can help him. I wanted your help, I'd ask for. I don't think I like him. Oh. Montana Perkins. <laughs> Montana is my son Joseph. Oh, yes. Sorry. Of course. <laughs> what? And uh, this is our chief cook and bodyguard, Hop Singh. Oh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Balls don't know us a whole lot about Montana Perkins. Well, he might have left a few things out. For <clears throat> one, they, uh, they don't call me Montana anymore. No, I'm the Reverend Carl Perkins now. The Reverend? You a preacher now? Are you a preacher? Are you surprised? <laughs> well, yes, a little bit. Faith doesn't <laughs> always come in a pretty package. When he called me to do his work, he didn't ask me how I dressed or what my manners were like. All he wanted to know was how strong I believe. And sometimes a man's not the best judge of his own salvation. Like they say, the way is hard and the road's long. And none of us are going to get out of this alive. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> They're two fine-looking boys, Ben. Come on, sit down. Well, uh, what brings you out this way? Looking for somebody to wear that. I heard that Joe Walters lived somewhere east of here. And I remember that big man could stare down a whole town. Haven't seen Joe around for quite a while. Did you find him? Yeah. Sitting on his porch in the sun with his hands all knotted up, grandkids swarming around his feet. Yeah, well, we're all getting older. True, true, but some are getting older than others. And I'm coming back empty-handed again. Now, if I could just find somebody, even somebody temporary, it'd be a big help. Every day the law's not there, that town sinks a little deeper. Well, if it's just some temporary, I mean, until you can get somebody oh, else. Just, 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 just. Oh, I've been a sheriff before. I've had experience. Of course you've had experience. Doing what? Looking after the officer for a couple of days? Well, this is just temporary. Besides, I ain't got nothing to do around here. Now, look, Hoss. Now, wait a minute, Ben. Why, Hoss? Oh... Let's just say that it's one step up that long, hard road for me. Well, Lonnie, you just want to get out of the cattle drive. Yeah, don't forget, Roundup is in two weeks. Just temporary, Paul. How long have you been looking for a sheriff? Off and on, two years. Uh -huh. uh, what do they call this place? Trouble. No, I mean the name of the town. That's the name of it, Trouble. 
Oh, why would anybody want to name a town trouble? You'll find out. I suppose you told them all about New Orleans. Uh, pardon, pardon. Okay. How about that business in Wichita? Well, uh, well, anyway, there was this girl named Alice. We called her Alice from Dallas by way of San Antonio. Oh. Oh. I didn't think they'd be interested. Well, surely I'd love to hear it. Well, yeah, Paul, you never did tell us about her. Well, there was nothing to tell. Nothing to tell? Montana? Oh. Yeah. Well, it's been nice seeing you again, Ben. And it's sure been a pleasure meeting your boys. Good to see you again. Take care. You ready, Hoss? Yep. Hey, brother, where are you going? I'll see if I can find out about Alice from Dallas by way of San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy, Paul. I'll see you. Take care of yourself. Yeah, that sure is a funny name for a town, huh? Dallas? No, not Dallas. Trouble. Oh. It's only a name. Probably just like any other town. I'm gonna put that window you just broke on your daddy's bill, you hear me? Tom. Come here, somebody I want you to meet. Ain't got time now, Reverend. Got customers waiting. Tom's the head of our town council. Only not during business hours. Well, you hungry, Hoss? Well, you do it, Mike. You serve a pretty good steak down at the saloon. Why don't you run on down there and I'll round up the sheriff and the judge. A couple others you want to meet and come on later. Sounds fine. See you later. Steak dinner's ready. What do you want? I'll have a steak dinner. And bring the lady a glass of water. You're a real big spender, ain't you? Well, that all depends. How much do you get for a glass of water around here? What's your name, big fellow? Folks call me Hoss. My name is Lily. You like it? Yeah. yeah. It's real pretty. It fits. Well, thank you. I picked it out of a book. My real name is Ethiopia. You don't go with the outfit. Uh, outfit fits, too. But just barely. Yeah. All right. One steak dinner. And a glass of water. Uh, bring her a shot of good whiskey to chase that with. We ain't got any good whiskey. It runs from bad to worse to rot gut. Well, bring her bad if that's the best you got. Tell me, Lily. Does he serve you real whiskey? Well, what difference does it make? It looks like whiskey. It costs just the same. I drink it, and you pay for it. Lily, tell me. <clears throat> What's a girl like you doing in a nice place like this? Just trying to make ends meet. The Bodie brothers are coming. The Bodie brothers are coming. Hey, come on. <laughs> Boy, he sure knows how to clear a place out, don't he? Well, most folks come in here for a drink. The Bodie brothers come in to pick fights with strangers. <laughs> there ain't no strangers left. What do they do in a cage like that? Well, one of them stands out front and throws them in off the street. And you'd better go before they get here. I ain't finished my steak yet. Well, look, you come back later. We'll have our drink then. Same, Rhea. Well, just so you know the rules, partner, anything goes. Biting, kicking, gouging, choking. But no knives and no guns. Well, <clears throat> fellas, I ain't feel the mistake yet. Uh, bartender, bring them around on me. Right, Cut. Sit down, boys. This will take a minute. <clears throat> uh, 
And I'm, my name's Matthew, and that's Mark, and he's Revelation. What happened to Luke and John? Uh, well, Mark took one look at Tim, and then to us, and figured she'd had enough, so she skipped to the back of the book. Yeah. <laughs> Chip, the Bodie brothers are over to saloon. So? One fellow didn't get out in time. Christian in with the lion. A great big fellow. It's going to be a way over fight. Why are you telling me? I thought you might want to watch. Well, there's four of them there, see? I took out the two big guys on this end there. And old Mark, he grabbed that fat guy, the beard. And old Rev here, he laid into that big old boy on the other end. And when Rev lays hold of a man, he knows he's been laid hold of. I'll bet. Oh, it wasn't nothing. I just took him to the floor and put the choke on him. His tongue comes out like this, and his lips turn blue, and his eyes roll back in his head. It, it took two of us to pull him off her. <laughs> Fun, huh? <laughs> Fun? <laughs> I should smile to tell you. Yeah. Why? Make way for the deputy. Make, make way for the deputy. You ain't gonna stop it, are you? Those boys mad at me? Not on your little tin drum. I think we'd better hurry up. Let me through there. Let me through. Let me through there. If you want good seats, come early. Yeah. I reckon you always won. Nine nine times out of a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why you thought it was so much fun. Seventy-five cents, sir. Fine. Here. Big change. Judge? I want you to meet Horse Cartwright. Honest. And now, folks, I want you to meet up with the man who's going to be our new sheriff. Welcome to trouble, Mr. Cartwright. Now, let's go over to the office and I'll swear you in. Begin to see what you mean about this town. Do you swear to uphold the law? I do, sir. Well, I guess that's just about everything, Sheriff Cartwright. And if there's anything else you need to know, our deputy here, Chip Chesterfield, he'll give you the answers. And if you need me, well, you know where to find me. <laughs> yes, sir. No, as a matter of fact, I don't. Well, you just ask anybody and they'll tell you. Huh. And if you need any help at all, you know who you can turn to. <laughs> uh... Who can I turn to? Absolutely nobody. They're not bad people, Hoss. They just don't care about anybody or anything, except themselves. Can we change that? Possibly. But first, I gotta get their attention. Well, seems like a pretty peaceful little town. At times. Jim, how come they didn't make you sheriff? It's too temporary. I've been a deputy here 12 years. I've seen 15 chefs come and go for one reason or another, mostly the other. Trail hat. Out of that herd on its way to San Francisco. Yeah. Well, I think I'll mosey over and let them know the law is alive and around. Well, that might be bad for business. They'll call us when they need us. Come on, Chip. Well, it's a little early yet. I said, come on, now, let's go.
Jones, you're all under arrest. For what? For disturbing the peace. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. They wasn't disturbing nobody's peace. They are just having a little fun. You call that fun? Well, it wasn't hurting nobody but each other. They was disturbing the peace. Now, this is my place. And I'll say who's disturbing the peace here and who's not. And I ain't pressing no charges. I told you it was still a little bit early. Come on, Jim, let's go. I don't know what they want with the sheriff around here if they ain't gonna let him do his job. Well, they'll let you do your job, boss. We're in there good and ready. Yeah, but what if I want to do it when I'm good and ready? And you just don't do things that way around here. But the law is the law anywhere. Anywhere but here. About that, yes, it was. That's why we just called you over here to show you that it was. Oh, oh, oh you boys don't want no more of that. First time was for fun. But now we got a grudge. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute, Chip. You already know the rules now. You ready? Chip, when they wake up. Uh-huh, see, so won't do no good locking my Chip, do like I tell you. What are you locking this up for? For assaulting the peace officer. We wasn't they assaulting nobody. It does the fact. We had a grudge against you. Oh, some people get mad over the least little thing. What are you thinking about? Um, just wondering what Hawks was up to. I'm sure he's doing all right. Mm. I shouldn't have let him go. Oh, now, come on. He's a big boy, but he can take care of himself. Yeah, no. Just that no matter how much older you boys get, I still think of you as my little boy. I <laughs> guess I always will. Look, if you want to ride over and see how he's making out, do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I would. Okay. Well, this ain't such a quiet little town after all. You get a few minutes of peace every day, about sundown. Gives the day people a chance to get into their houses, and the night people a chance to come out from under their rocks. Hey, look here, Chip, you've been here for 12 years now. How come you ain't done something about it? I guess a man kind of gets used to people telling him what to do. Well, not a lawman. People don't tell a lawman what to do. They tell him what they think is right and what they think is wrong, and he takes over from there. Yeah, that sounds good, Hoss. But doing it ain't easy. Well, I didn't say it was. Well, I guess it's time. Yeah, it's time for what? Go down the saloon. Pick up those straight hands. Uh, them boys, he is disturbing the peace now, Sheriff. Well, what are they doing? Well, what difference does it make? I'm a citizen and a taxpayer. I'm making a complaint. Them boys are disturbing the peace. <laughs> So what are you all arrested now for? We ain't got any money now. 
ship. All right, boys, you're under arrest. That goes for you too, Bubba. Oh, no, 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 not him. He's still got some money left. Yeah, I got me a whole bag full of gold. It's gone! Ah, uh, Lily. Now, Hoss, I wouldn't do a thing like that. I may be pretty, but I'm still honest. Why, underneath all this, I got a heart of gold. Yeah, and somewhere underneath all that, you got a bag of gold. Now, give it back to him. Go on. All right, boys, follow me. Bring up the rear, Chip. <laughs> Disorderly, disturbing the peace and causing a public nuisance, five dollars a piece. Put the money on the desk and get out. The bills of the gods do not grind exceedingly slow in this town. Yeah. You can say that again. safe over there. Your Honor, as long as you're here. Well, what did they do? These men started a fight with me. <laughs> Is that all? Well, Your Honor, these men are charged with assaulting an officer of the law. We wasn't assaulting an officer, we just fighting with Hoss. Well, it's the same difference. Now, don't interrupt, Sheriff. You made the charge, now let him answer it. We just settling up a grudge with Hoss. It's just between him and us. It had nothing to do with the law or him being an officer. Then you didn't intend the law no harm. Oh, no, sir. We just wanted to whoop Hoss. That being the case, not guilty. Run along, boys. Your Honor, these fellas attacked me. It was between you and them. And the law is not here to settle your personal matters. But, Your Honor, They I... were not mad at the law, Sheriff. They were mad at you. All right. They're guilty of assault and battery, then. Well, possibly, but that isn't what you charged them with. Now, don't forget the letter of the law, Sheriff. I won't forget the letter of the law if you don't forget the intent. The... Even a sheriff can be charged with contempt. Run along, boys. Thanks a lot, Uncle Jeff. See you Sunday. Matthew, I tell your mother I'll be there about the usual time. Yes, sir, Uncle Jeff. Good afternoon, Sheriff. Your Honor. Yes? <laughs> Judge. Yes? I know this is maybe a ridiculous question, but... Them three boys. They're your nephews. Yes, that's right. Their mother is my baby sister. Huh. Well, you knew they was guilty. Well, yes, of course I did. Then how come you let them go? Well, for a very simple reason. If they went to jail, it'd break their mother's heart. Oh. Good afternoon, Sheriff. I tried to tell you. Wouldn't do any good to arrest those boys. Yeah. I'm beginning to understand how this town got its name. It could be worse. Yeah, I reckon it could. It could be raining all day, every day. A little 
animal, and somebody has to teach him some manners. Don't call my son a little animal. He at least breathes now and then, which is more than I can say about yours. My son is the cleanest boy in the second grade. And the oldest. Well, Ladies. it wouldn't be if yours ever got out of the first grade. Ladies. Oh, just keep out of this. Mama! Mama, he hit me! Oh! oh. Sheriff, I want you to arrest that bully. You lay a hand on my son and you will have the devil to pay and me to reckon with. Which is one and the same. Ladies, ladies, please, please. somebody to do it for you. It costs too much money. All right, I'll just get a law passed against it, that's all. Well, we'll talk about that the next time the town council meets. In about six months. Trouble is, them that make the biggest messes also pass the laws. Hey, Sheriff, there's some guy been sneaking around town all morning. He's over the bank in that alley. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Jethro. The pleasure is mine, sir. All mine. Who that was? That was Jack Clinton. Well, of course. He's my biggest depositor. Checking and savings. You know where he gets his money? Nope. Never asked. And he never said. Oh, I'm not surprised. It's none of my business. And it's none of yours. Well, what do you think of that? I think the more I see this town, the more I see why they need some law and order. Who's in this town? The Clanton gang. Why, well, I know that. Well, let's go arrest them then. For what? For the bank robbery. Wait. The only one I know for sure is Reno. It ain't against the law in California to rob a bank in Nevada. It ain't? Or Arizona. Or New Mexico. Or Colorado. Or even Oklahoma. You mean them Clantons ain't wanted for nothing here in California? Why, well, they don't even spit on the street here. They're little angels. One of them's even been known to go to church on Sunday. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You mean nobody in this whole town cares who they are or what they've done? Not as long as they pay their bills. Tip heavy. And don't bother nobody. I don't understand these people. Well, look, you want to be smart? Take the badge off, put it on the desk, let's go get your horse and get out of here. Not yet, Joe. These people don't care. Well, I do. And it bothers me, and I'm going to do something about it. How do you feel about it, Chip? I've been a lawman 12 years, and I don't like what's going on in this town. There's nothing I can do about it. You ever try? I did, a number of times. And people complained that what I was doing was bad for business. As fast as I could pick them up, they'd turn them loose. What would you say if I was to tell you we're going to put this town in order? I'd say you had rocks for brains. 
but I'd back you all the way. Good. Joe, as of now, you're a deputy. Two dollars a week. I don't think I want the job. Now, come on, Joe. I'm going to need all the help I can get. All right. I still think you're making a mistake. Foss, I just came in to tell you that... the clamming gang's in town. Yeah, but I think you also ought to know... That, that everybody in town don't give a hoot one way or another. Yeah, beside that... I better stay out of their way. I'm afraid that you... I won't take that advice. So I came to offer my help. You have all the towns in the whole world for you to take up preaching, man, and to preach the gospel. Why did you choose this one? Well, Horace, I figured as long as I was fishing for the souls of sinners, I might just as well fish where the big ones are. Well, let's go out there and see if we can put a couple on our hooks. And just how do you intend doing that? Well, first I gotta get your attention. Preacher, since you don't wear a gun or a badge, you keep your eye on the Clintons after you send that telegram. Chip, you go over to the bank. Don't make a move here for me. Yeah. Folks in this town have been using the law for their own convenience too long. They gotta learn that it works 24 hours a day and it's equal for everybody. There he is now. So what? There he is. What are you gonna arrest him for? Anything. Come on. Swing with the right, why? Uh, that's what I thought you said. You're under arrest for inciting a riot, Your Honor. A what? A riot. Joe, get these boys for public brawling for inciting a riot. Uh, uh, Sheriff, you can't do this. For what? We're just settling our differences. Yeah, well, that's not the way to do it. That's where everybody else does it. Not anymore. Since when? Since now. Says who? Says me. Let's go. Oh. I happen to be the judge here, and a model citizen of this town, and I'm telling you, you cannot do this. Mm -hmm. It's a random trumped up charge, and you can't make it stick. Mm -hmm. But it is the letter of the law, ain't it? It'll be thrown out of court. Yeah, probably. And what's more, just who's going to try this case with me in jail? Oh, I'll probably have to go get the circuit judge. It may take him two or three weeks to get here. Two or three weeks? Oh, my mama! We'll see what we can do about that, Pete. There. Didn't I tell you boys that fighting was wrong? No. I didn't. No. Well, didn't anybody tell you? No. Oh. I see. I am sick and tired of you and your whole family. Ma, I want you to know that my family is one of the oldest in town. Well, I always said you look young for your age. <gasps> Ladies. My age? I don't know who paints your face, but whoever it is does a beautiful job and ought to sign his work. Ladies. Oh, you keep out of this. I just wanted to tell you that... My face is not painted. This is my natural color. Then why does it come off on your collar? You're under arrest for creating a public disturbance. Lock him up, Joseph. Oh! Ladies. Ladies, right this way, please.
Sheriff, could I have a word with you? Not right now, Judge. I'm a little busy. Well, at your convenience. Yeah. Joe, you'll have to look after things while I'm gone. Yeah, you be careful. I was no worry. Send a telegram? Send it. We got an answer. They'll be waiting. Good. They in there? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Would you mind if I had a little talk with the prisoners while you're gone? Go right ahead. I think they'll be in a mood to listen. Sheriff, we ain't wanted in California. We ain't been in California for about the last five minutes. We're in Nevada. Ah, uh, yes, but you're a California sheriff, and you've got no authority in Nevada. That's right. All right, boys, come on out. Look around you, Jack. <laughs> glad to see you, Paul. Yeah, kind of relieved to see you, too, sir. There for a while. I didn't know whether I was leading them or they was chasing me. Is that list of banks that were robbed? Good. Now, give me them bank books. Very good. Paul, I'll see you. Thank you much. I know all of you. And you're all for the law. One hundred percent. Just as long as it applies to the other fellow. And that brings up the question, is the law the master or the servant of the people? We're clogged. Yeah, wait a minute. Here's uh, Clinton's bank books. Here's a list of the banks they robbed and how much they took. Now, you see to it that that money's put where it belongs, or I'm going to arrest you for receiving stolen property. That ought to be good for ten years. I'll take care of it right yeah, away. Yeah, I would. And there'll be a federal marshal by next week to make sure it's done properly. You've all been living by your own set of rules for a long time now. But from now on, you're going to live by a different set. The ones in here. Pass, I'm... I'm obliged to you. It's been a long time since I liked being a lawman. Huh. Well, Chip, a fellow's got to work at it. The Bodie brothers are coming. That burn it. Would them fellas ever give up? Cause let me handle this. Well, be my pleasure. Go right ahead. And you're all pointing your finger at everybody else. Well, you better start cleaning up your own house before you tell the other fella his is dirty. About three, Reverend. All finished, horse. 
Well, Judge, I reckon you've learned your lesson about letter of law, so I'm going to let you go now. No, Sheriff. I have been charged. I demand a trial. You do? Even if I have to conduct it myself. Court is now in session. I, uh, I find you all guilty of various and sundry charges. Anybody got anything to say before I pass sentence? Well, the sentence is... Ten days at hard labor. Including me. And anybody who isn't out on that street helping to clean up this town at eight o'clock tomorrow morning is going to jail for 30 days. Get one go, Sheriff. That was a great sermon. I was just getting started, Judge. Well, you just pick up on Sunday where you left off, and I'll be in the first row. Hey, you see the boys? Yeah, I saw them. I told them to go home and not come back to town till they could learn how to behave. Is that a fact? What happened? Well, nothing special. I think they'll probably go home when they wake up. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good for you, Joe. <laughs> well, Joe, you ready to go home? Oh, I said, let's go. Wait a minute. You can't go. If you leave now, what'll happen to this town? Why, Judge, I don't think anything's gonna happen in this town that your new sheriff here can't take care of. Awesome. Reverend. Joe, take care. Thank Ben for me. Well, it is. Let's go, Joe. Hey, Sheriff, I almost forgot. I'll keep it for souvenir. Remember trouble. We ain't likely to forget it soon. Adios. And I'll go by the way of Wheeler Ridge. I want to have a look at that timber stand before we make an offer. Mighty bad trail, folks. How come in a riding buck? Oh, I thought I'd get Cinnamon a ride. Teach him who's boss again.
I still think it's pretty hot. Howdy. Howdy. We help you? What are you doing here? What's it look like we're doing? You got business here? We're just riding through, looking at some timberland. Well, as long as you're just riding through, just keep riding. Hey, you don't mind if we finish our coffee first, do you? I don't mind. <laughs> Joseph. Better take his advice. Joseph. Joseph, uh, you make a lousy cup of coffee. <laughs> Stand of trees. Enough timber there to shore up every mine in Virginia City. We sure could. <laughs> yeah, Snow did these trees a lot of good. Have to do some thinning over here. Yeah. Fine stand. Better get along. I sure wish we had a little time. Wouldn't mind doing some fishing on that lake down there. your legs.
Well, take it easy, man. That's gonna have to last you a while. Yes, gentlemen. The horse is all right. We'll have to run off. Yeah. Make a good saddle horse. Once you get to the learn who's the boss. Yeah, so you told me. Go leave the canteen here where you can reach it. Here's your gun. I know you're hurting, but you're gonna have to lie still and just take it easy when I get back. Oh, Joey, I think I can make it up the hill and just rest for a little while. Well, there's no way you can get up that hill, and there's no way I can get you up without help. I need some men in a wagon. There's gotta be some ranches between here and town. I'll be back as soon as I can. Somebody's coming. Listen to me. Get off my property now. Son, let's get back to work. Down a little. Down a little. That's it. By yourself? Yeah. What's your business? I need some help. Found the help. Look, Mr. Believe me, I'm not looking for any trouble. It's, it's my pa. There was an accident. I need a wagon, a block and tackle, and a doctor. There's one in Grant's four. If you hurry, you might catch him sober. I could use that wagon to team first. Somebody to help me with it. We can't help you, mister. What kind of brand is that? It's Ponderosa. We're from Virginia City. What about the wagon? What did you say you left your paw? At the top of Wheeler Ridge, at the bottom of a bluff. Couldn't move him. What happened to him? I think it's his back. I sure could use some help. Back, huh? <sighs> My wagon would be too heavy to go up Wheeler Ridge. What you need is a lighter wagon and a good team. 
I got the team with the Elvis Stover's place today. He's he's plowing. Could you get him? I expect so. How long ago did this happen? I don't know, two hours. You're not thinking of helping him, are you? Pa, you can't go. If anything happened to you in those hills, it'd be weeks before we even found you. Look, man, my father's only eight or nine miles from here. Look, what is this? I'm just asking you to help him. Now, hold on. Maybe she's right. I don't know you're not lying to me. You could be working for the Dawson Cattle Company. Look, mister, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have time to argue, you know. I need the wagon and I need the team. Now, I'll rent it from you. How much do you want for it? You mean you're going to try to bring up that bluff all by yourself? Well, it looks like I don't have much choice, doesn't it? Well, now, simmer down. Let's see here. Now, if it's just bad... Well, it's going to take at least four men to bring Oh, you can't go. Now, you simmer down, too, honey. You go in the house and get some blankets and a medical chest. But, Pa, you... Now, you're wasting time, Martha. I get it. I don't suppose you'd mind if I, uh... Kept that pistol for a while, would you? Be my guest. You'll find some rope and tackle out back of the house. I'll go fetch the team. I'll be back in a little while. Thanks. to get Stover to go along with us, but he said he saw some of Dawson's men in the valley this morning. He's too afraid to leave his place. Martha, get out here with that medicine. We gotta leave. What about this Dawson? Why is everybody afraid of him? Well, I never met him personally, but uh, he's the head of a big cattle company. They used to lease this whole valley for graze until the government turned it over to homesteaders. He didn't want to give it up, huh? <laughs> That's right. Now, he don't seem to think much of us folks, so he's... Hired himself a bunch of men to try to run us out of here. He's not fussy about how he does it, either. Yeah, why don't you give me that medicine? Let's get that wagon. Give me a leg up. Where do you think you're going? With you. Oh, no, you're not. It's too dangerous. Well, if it's too dangerous for me, then it's too dangerous for you. Give me a leg now, up. Now, hold on. You know that horse ain't saddled for a kid. You're going to go, you go with him. He sure thinks a lot like a man. We'll stop our boss' place and pick up that rig. Maybe he and his son will go along with us. like he brought company with him. Wait a minute, Pa. Ain't that Mr. Thornton and uh, Martha? You're right. Better be a little more careful. Wouldn't want anything to happen to her, would we? No, sir.
Huh? If it's true what Joe says about his pa, it's gonna take one of us two to get him to that mountain. I don't mind you using the wagon, Ed. But me and my boy are staying here. If what he says is true. It still could be a trick, you know. Dawson's got his eye on you. That's just talk. Oh, no, Ed. You know yourself, most of them cowboys that ride for Dawson don't know nothing about cows. All they're waiting to do is get us out in the open somewhere or away from our homesteads, and you especially. Maybe. But, but don't you see, Tom, we just can't keep hiding in the hole. We've got to come out and face them sooner or later. I prefer later. Wagon well, set up. We're ready to go. I'm not going. What about the boy? He ain't going either. I need the help. We'll still need those planks and the block and tackle. And the planks are around the side of the house. And that block and tackle's over by the trees where we was pulling stumps. Yeah, I remember. Pa's letting you go? Yeah. Ain't that kind of dangerous? It'd be just as dangerous to stay at the cabin by myself. Well, there's no need for you to go. You can stay here till they get back. No, no, I'm going. Why? Because he needs me. Besides, we can't all stay where it's safe, Brian. Somebody's got to go. I'm sorry I can't help, but it just ain't safe. You do whatever you think is right. Maybe they didn't tell you about Dawson. Yeah, they told me. Then you understand why I can't help. No, I know. I'm going with him, Pa. No, you're not. I made up my mind. I'm going. It's the only right thing to do. All right, son. We'll both go.
happened? This is Dawson's man now. Don't fret, honey. Martha, we got to get him to the house. Give him a hand, Brian. Don't touch him! This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. Your trouble, mister. I knew it from the minute I saw you. Now get out of here. Go on and leave us alone. She's right, son. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do to help. Joe. I told you to keep moving. It was an accident. My paws hurt real bad. Ain't that a shame? What uh, were you doing with them nesters? Trying to get them to help. Well, that'd be too much like work for them. And what about you? Huh? Look, I need the help. I'll make it worth your while. How much? Just name your price. Oh, say ten dollars a man. You got a deal. Hey, them's pretty good wages, even for you, Bill. What do you say, Frank? Let's go, Joseph. say stop, we stop. When I say go, we go. Look, I told you, I'm paying you for this. At, uh, Ed Thornton. Are you a friend of yours? Can we talk about it on the way? Well, I think we'll talk about it now. You, uh, you like Thornton? Yeah, he was gonna help me. 
Man said, do you like him? We got along well enough. Well, suppose I told you that, uh, what was his first name? Ed. Ed. Suppose I told you that Ed Thornton was a no good yellow troublemaker. I don't know what you're getting at. Just like to see what sort of stuff a fellow's made of. Look, I don't want to quarrel with you. You say what you want to say. I don't care. Hey, boy, don't you know who you're talking to? Of course he does. Everybody in this part of the country knows Frank Wells. You say it now. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow troublemaker. Go ahead. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow. No. Sing it right off. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow troublemaker. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Joseph. You Cartwrights don't have much backbone. Let's go. hard going. Well, I told you it would be. I really thought it just come across my mind. Maybe you don't have any money. Don't worry about your money. I've got it. Now, how do we know? We don't know you from a kick in the teeth. That's right. We better see it. All right, there's $40. That's more than enough. $40? Just about right. You got yourself a deal. Now, let's go. Let's go. good shape, does he? Yeah, he looked a little better last time we saw him. You know what? He's a lot bigger than I remembered. Now that you mention it. You know, Joseph, $40 for hauling a man that size up this hill. Sure don't seem enough money. Look, I gave you all the money I've got. Just funnin', Joseph. Easy, easy. Secured? Yeah. Make sure that's good and secure. Get some beef on the end of that rope. I'll guide the sled. All right, you ready? Okay, start hauling them up. We done our forty dollars worth. He's your old man. You get him up. Ha, ha, ha. 
No, sir. That's a good sign. Anybody thinks that medicine tastes good, is bound to be sick. You did all the right things, Cartwright. If you tried to move him before you strapped him to that board, he might have been crippled for life. How's his back? Well, it's not broken. He could wiggle his toes after we got his boots off. He jumped real good when I stuck that pin in his leg. Why'd you have to stick him so hard? Why not? Well, it hurt him. It's supposed to. Same as medicine's supposed to taste bad. Now, don't you go telling me how to run my business. You run along and let that man rest. You mind if I worry a little? Not at all. It'll make you feel better. It's not going to do him any good. Now, what about Ed Thornton? How's he getting along? Why are you interested? He was trying to help me when he got shot. Well, he'll have his arm in a sling for a couple of days, then he'll be all right. Well, whatever he owes you put on our bill. I'll put it on anybody, but as long as I get paid. Don't worry, we'll get paid. Well, it's good to hear that doctor say he's going to be all right, ain't it? Yeah, I thought his back was broke for sure. You should have seen a fall he took down that hill. Yeah, well, he's going to rest easy for a while now. Whatever that doc gave him, really not. Hey. That's them. That's Wells. Wait a minute. Hey, get me up here. Let the law take care of this, Joe. Come on. Sheriff? Yep. I want to talk to you about a man named Wells, Frank Wells. Oh, you're a cart ride. Norton told me all about it. Coffee? No, Wells just rode into town. He's in the saloon. Yeah. Hey, you might just well sit down and relax. Look, I've been through this before. Them old studies are just too scared to speak up in court. Well, you said you talked to Thornton. What about him? Oh, Thornton's smart enough to testify all right when he's up and around. The rest of them... Who cares about the rest of them? Wells shot Thornton, and Thornton's willing to testify against him. You saw it? No, I didn't see it. Nobody ever does. Thornton was struck down mysterious by some bullet that come whizzing out of nowhere. Oh, I could arrest Wells, sure. More than happy to. It's a waste of time. It's Thornton's word against Wells and his men. Look, I've been up this road before. Down it, cross it every which way. I make arrests, come to trial. Rascal gets turned loose for lack of witnesses and then laughs in my face on the way out. If Wells took $40 from me, I'll testify against him. All right. He stuck a gun in your belly and took $40 from you. No, he didn't stick a well, gun. He picked your pocket. No, he didn't pick then my pocket. Then what did he do, Mr. Well, if Cartwright? if you be quiet for a minute, I'll tell you. I gave Wells and his men some... Oh, way. hold it. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First you say he stole it, now you say you gave it to him. Which is it, Mr. Cartwright? I paid Wells and his men $40 to help me. They didn't do it. That is not a criminal case, Mr. Cartwright. That is a civil matter. Of course, you can take Wells into court and try to get your money back if you want to. Forget it, Sheriff. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. You've been a big help. Well, I 
guess you was right in the first place. That sure was a waste of time. Yeah. I've got an idea. I'm gonna go to the saloon and talk to Wells. You bring the sheriff up in about five minutes. Joe. Where I am? I'm not gonna do anything. I haven't got a gun. I just want to talk to him. Well, make sure that's all you do is just talk. Yeah, make sure you bring the sheriff. How's your daddy, Joseph? He's all right. You see that? You didn't need us. You managed all by yourself. Now I got some help. Boy, when the son came along, gave us a hand. Should have stuck around to see that one. You didn't miss anything? You know, I'm kind of glad you stopped in, Joseph. I've been sitting here thinking, wondering if maybe there's something I forgot to take this afternoon. I don't think so. He got all my money. All he left me with was my boots. What size boots you wear? I don't know. They look about my size. It's a nice looking boot. My old boots are getting kind of shorty. Why don't you take those off and toss them over here? Why don't you just come over here and get them? Why don't I take them off your dead carcass? I think you'd have a little trouble doing that without your two friends along. It's gonna take more than a nice pair of boots to make a man out of you, boy. Why don't you just come take them? Oh, I'm gonna love this. Some kind of some kind of charge for shooting a man who doesn't have a gun, Sheriff. That's that's mine you're holding in your hand. Yeah. We call that attempt for murder. Well, don't tell me you can't find a witness that'll testify this time. Oh, I think we can manage this time, Mr. Cartwright. Come on. I thought you told me you were just gonna talk. Why don't you shut up and go get the bartender? I'll buy you a beer. Hey, 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 Joe. Hi, Joe. It's 
my brother Horst. This is Ed Thornton and his daughter. He's a fellow I was telling you about. Yeah, Mr. Thornton. Miss Thornton, happy to meet you. Hello. I'd like to thank you for getting these folks to help our Paul. Well, the pleasure is mine, believe me. How's the arm coming? Oh, <laughs> it's improved a lot, especially since I heard Wells is in jail. I yeah, would be happy to give you a hand out at your place till he gets better. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, Tom Boyle's son said he'd uh, be mighty glad to come over and help out. I kind of feel like I owe you. No. Your account is paid in full. Look, I'm sorry about the way I acted and those things I said. You had a right to expect help. Forget it. We're both worried about our pause. Say, how's your part, Joe? Hey, he's coming along fine. Doc says we can move him today. We're going to be heading back. That's sure good to hear. Well, listen, huh? If you folks ever pass through this valley, be sure to stop in and see us. I, I got a feeling this place is going to be a lot friendlier from now on. We'll do it. Take care. Goodbye. Ha! Get <laughs>